Now, I know I did start the, the deeper dive stuff on the blog, but I find I'm having just as much fun talking about stuff, too. So I'm probably going to convert that stuff over here to the channel. And the first thing I'm going to cover, because I, I figure, you know, instead of trying to cover everything all at once or like two or three books a month, I'm going to try to do like in bits and pieces or, or like parts even here and put it up there or at least up on the channel anyway. So this is like semi off the cuff, semi planned. So the first one I want to dive into is One Last Echo. Uh, he has a very well built world. Like it starts off uh, smaller, like within a few cities on Earth itself. And it'll eventually the storyline expands out to have a little bit of uh, let's say extraterrestrial ex shenanigans or, or other space bound shenanigans which is also very fun uh, it has good aesthetics for mixing in multiple different um, kind of like comic book uh, ages it has some of the genuine optimism of the Silver Age it has some of the like precursor stuff from the Golden Age where you know um, the main character's parents are kind of with that along with some of their friends from World War II. Uh, it touches on some stuff of, like, you know, the Iron Age. Like, some of the characters are more like anti-heroes or villains to hero kind of setup. And while that's not as much of my personal wheelhouse, he still mixes a lot of it all in together to where it overlaps enough where I have a definite enjoyable time. Some, <coughs> excuse me, some people are naturally better at, you know, basically building up a Batman type character or a Punisher type setup. Me personally, that doesn't come very easily to me at all. So that's why you won't see as much of that with Uplift Protocol. But to get back to One Last Echo, it it does appeal to a whole lot of things that I find that's missing in superhero prose, which is mainly have a sense of goddamn hope. You know, the, the main character has a moment of worry where she's like, are people worth saving? And she goes out on the other side and realizes because of a few friends, like, yes, you know what? People are worth saving and worth fighting for, which is a good thing to see in, in superhero setups. Really, it, it, it does bring me a genuine sense of joy that it's like, yes, she has a bit of aspirational hero in her, uh, even though she doesn't have superpowers like her parents. Her, she com has completely no power at all. Like, in, in the sense of even what their stuff was. Which also creates another conundrum. You get a sense from her background that her parents kept her under lock and key because they were afraid that their rogues galleries would capture her as a hostage most times. So, you know, the, the book goes into some, some common tropes you can see with, with superhero pros, but it lampshades it in a very loving way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, does it do that. And like I was saying with the deep dive, there's certain aspects that kind of reminded me of uh, Babylon 5 in terms of, like, it doesn't matter what the character's skin color is, you've got an actual character here, which is very much appreciated. He also throws a bit of shade on college campuses. You know, how the ivory tower mentality, he made it to where this one professor really hates... No capes, but he doesn't. He doesn't do it in such a way that Etna does it from uh from the first Incredibles. It's more like he's kind of like this ivory tower curmudgeon that doesn't like it when he, the kids get out of line and everything. But he goes about it in such a crotchety way. It kind of re reminded me of like either um like Ebenezer Scrooge, <laughs> you know the. A person so beaten down by cynicism. <laughs> so th that's a good way to do compare and contrast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And like I was saying on the blog, basically, um, Eric's book showcases that the world does need aspirational heroes. It needs capes. It needs people that will put everything on the line, even if it's just for one soul in the dark. You know, that's what I... I appreciate about the self-sacrificing nature of Marcus Cole from Babylon 5. I know I compare a lot of things to Babylon 5, but it's just because it it showcases a lot of things that are missing from most modern stories. There's archetypes and, and universal 
symbology for a reason. And, you know, it, 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 in a way, we need something to offset all the drudgery that's going on. We really do. That's why the world looks to superheroes sometimes to provide that aspirational boost, that couple of minutes in the sun, and then, you know, you get back to work and then... But anything that promotes the cardinal virtues is rare, or more rare nowadays, depending on where you look. And I think a lot of the characters in One Last Echo, each of them have the cardinal virtues to a degree. Some might have it a bit more than others, but the underlying, like, uh, bridge work is there, where you can see these guys overcome everything through even simple teamwork. The actual good nature of the main character managed to change uh, Madam Yellow Jacket a bit. You know, she kind of starts off as somebody that might not even be redeemable. Um, depending on what kind of superhero story you want to tell, I personally do favor stuff that where it can re legitimately redeem a person. Um, the only thing, the only reason why half the time I have to push that aside every once in a while is because so many modern stories have the villains as the protagonist, but they never change. They never go in and become a hero like Xena did. Well, Yellow Jacket might be on that path. We shall see, because, you know, it's, it's just the first book. But Eric really did put in enough stuff. You know, Sarge, you did a good job, buddy. He put in enough stuff, enough characters, different types of characters that were genuinely likable. So it tickled enough of, of my wheelhouse to be like, I'm going to keep going with this thing. Because even if it doesn't... Not, unless you personally write it yourself, nothing will fully overlap with your own 100% wheelhouse sensibilities. That's why if you want something that completely matches everything you want, write it or draw it yourself. But again, usually with readers, you can find some sort of common overlap. And you know what? It does have a certain level of cornball in it that I enjoy. One Last Echo isn't above making a little bit of fun at itself. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to, trying to think in, in reference to, like, I made a reference to Kill Bill, because, you know, yet the lady in yellow kind of mimics a little bit of the revenge path of, of the bride. But just like with Kill Bill, you know, Bill was, was wrong about superheroes and Superman in general. And in fact, even though the bride did a lot of horrendous things to a lot of her other horrendous people, in the end, she was trying to find her own redemption in reclaiming her child. So even with One Last Echo, you can see there's not too many superhero books that examine superhero parents with their children. Uh, a lot of them will either A, have the absentee dad, or the dad is dead, or the mom is dead, or the dad's a bumbling idiot. With One Last Echo, you could tell that her parents are definitely not idiots. They know what's up. They're trying desperately to let their kid lead her own life without having to worry about whatever will show up because of what their legacy is. But it also showcases that no matter how old you get, Parents are going to parent. Usually the really good parents will be there th through thick and thin and be like, we want to help our kids succeed. You know, if, if it's a case of the dynamics between fathers and daughters are different with the dynamics between mothers and daughters, just as the same, like a father will treat a son differently versus a mother treating a son differently. Same goes for the daughter. So... I do appreciate that aspect where it he does showcase that very well. Like, parents react differently to whatever their kid is. Um, and that, and nowadays that's especially downplayed because I guess they want to, they figure 
the single parent sometimes in some of these setups can, oh, it can, that single parent can do everything. It's like, uh, not quite. I, but I do appreciate the fact that this book does have actual nuclear family where you can still get a lot of, a lot of events and drama happening from having both parents alive and kicking. And even through various friendships, you can even have, you can have some genuine drama there too, or tension, but it doesn't always have to be the tension of, you betrayed me, that sort of thing. Like, no, sometimes it could be just a common tension of where maybe the characters are misunderstanding each other, but what you could do is you could straighten that out fairly quickly, you know, have them recognize like, oh, this is what you meant. I mean, you don't have to carry that on for chapter and chapter and chapter, because sometimes with some books, especially depending on the subgenre, they will take a simple situation and have it last for chapters when it could easily be resolved in one or two, and then you can carry on with the main narrative. Uh, one Last Echo does carry its narrative very well. It, it gets to where it needs to go fairly quickly. I found that I was pretty interested in turning pages. Um, sometimes if I was tired after work, I, I, I would be like, oh my goodness, you know, at least this little, this little aspect of, oof, like, uh, there's, because I'm trying not to spoil too much of anything, because, like, sometimes with deep dives, it's like, oops, a daisy, wait, I'm letting too much of the cat out of the bag. I mean, I can link part of the deep, deep dive stuff below from the blog, but I find that I'll probably end up finishing most of this off with, you know, the actual stuff on YouTube here. Um... Let's see. Hmm. Let's see how to how to put this. Um, he does have a good grasp of char compare and contrast between his characters. That way, it showcases why none of these characters in this book are really a Mary Sue. Because to me, again, Mary Sues are mechanically they can do everything on their own without a side cast. This these guys they need to be a team in order to get things done. Uh, some have more capabilities than others in terms of powers, but it doesn't mean the other characters are just empty space sitting there. They're all there for a reason. It, it, that's just the thing with books. It's like, if you know what you want to write, it'll come out on the page. You can tell that he loves these characters, this setting. He loves superheroes pretty much as much as I do. So he's taking the time and consideration to bring in a whole lot of tropes that he dearly enjoys. I would say if you're looking for superhero prose that has has some se like modern sensibilities in terms of like how would some technology affect heroes versus you know putting lampshades on how the secret identities work and everything else. Yeah, there's there's a lot of heart that went into this book. So I hope you guys do enjoy it. I'll link it below, and I'll see you on another episode of a, like a, a deep dive. This is kind of like an introduction to it. I'll probably start making some more notes as I go along, because, again, I'm going to just start back from the beginning and go through more stuff and make highlights, like even more so than what I did with the original blog post. I'm probably going to try to focus in on... Maybe some of the paragraphs set up, how the rising fall in action works, you know. Because now I want to kind of look at things not just from a reader aspect, from a writer aspect as well. So, have a good day everybody, and welcome to episode one of Deep Dives. And this is going to cover mainly one last echo. And then I'm thinking I'll probably go one book each month. And I'll do a more deep dive on another book. So the next one's in the stable because I promised them first is the Cliptic and also uh, Seekers of Fortune. So the Cliptic is more space horror and Seekers of Fortune is more kind of pulpy sword and sorcery goodness. And this one will be the primary superhero prose book for the month of October as far as deep dive goes. So... Have a good day, everybody.